What Scannell wanted more than anything was to be a poet. I say more than anything, it was the only thing that he wanted. Everything else was as nothing compared with that ambition to be a poet, to be considered among the great poets that he, that he loved. I think it's true that any poet who's going to be great has to feel like that. And it sounds almost sentimental, a sort of hearts and flowers kind of attitude of how wonderful it would be to be a poet. It's not that at all. It's bleak and it can sometimes be very cruel. If all you want to be is a poet, it doesn't leave much room for being a husband or a father or an ordinary human being. And there are a lot of areas in Scannell's life where that desire, that overriding desire to be a poet made him a person who was not easy to like. There are some very bleak, some very black parts of Scannell's life. I'm not going to talk about them, not because I'm being coy and not because I'm thinking, well, you can damn well buy the book if you want to find out about them. I'm not going to talk about them because you have to see them in context. You can't talk about, about the, the dark side of Scannell's life without explaining where it came from, how it built upon his war service, what happened to him in the war. It always seems to me that if you come back from a war without an arm or without a leg, you're a hero. But if you come back from the war with your soul shredded by your experiences, then you're a problem. And in a modern world, you might end up selling the big issue on the street, so you might end up in prison. In Scannell's world, well, Scannell fell apart in a lot of ways, and uh, the book tells the story of how that happened. So it's the story of where poetry comes from, and where poetry comes from is often a very black and bleak place.